patient at the most merciful. My journey to Islam started when um, a friend of mine, a couple of friends of mine, they wanted to take me to the mosque. I was hanging out with a lot of people that were Muslim. They didn't behave as Muslims, but they were Muslim. So the first initial group. And then Alhamdulillah, I met a sister that is still very near and dear to me. And um, she actually took me to the masjid, Alhamdulillah. But it all started, me wanting to go to the masjid came from me wanting something better for my kids. I was looking for something better for my kids because my life was very disorganized. You know, I, my, I come from a household where my mother was a drug addict. My father was a cartel. He was in the Colombian cartel. He got 30 years in jail. My mother died from a heroin overdose. So my lifestyle was very similar to them. And I was going down that path. And I didn't want to leave my kids the way my mother left us. So the more I reflected on that, that kind of pushed me to look for something like you know, for something. And when I was hanging out with them, they told me that being Muslim was about just believing in one God. And that was appeasing to me. You know, I didn't have to have any statues. and It's just one God. And I got curious. That's where it started. They did, my, the rest of my family did not react in a positive way to me being Muslim, it wasn't so much me saying la ilaha Allah that bothered them because they're not Catholic to the sense where they're constantly in the church or you know they just go to church when it's the palms or the ashes but it was my attire that disturbed them and the things that I changed. I no longer was Natalie that came in with the coronas and was like hey party over here you know. I was now Natalie who was like Assalamu alaikum, how are you? And they're like, they didn't understand when I didn't want to go to a barbecue because they had pork. They didn't understand when I didn't want to go because they were drinking. They didn't understand that I didn't celebrate birthdays and that I wasn't going to celebrate a birthday. So, and they didn't understand how a person that was so fond of her six inch heels and her little dresses and her hair, I'm talking about extensions, eyelashes, nails, everything, they didn't understand how a person like that can turn into this. So they didn't recognize, one Christmas I went to visit them and they literally slammed the door in my face. They didn't recognize who I was. My cousin looked at me and was like, what the heck? <laughs> so um, they didn't have a good reaction at first. But Alhamdulillah with time, they, you know, they came to accept it. It's just something you have to push through. You have to push through it. And eventually if you hold on to it hard enough, they'll accept it. You know, I compared my dress attire to that of the Virgin Mary. I'm like, how do you pray to her? And it's okay for her to dress like that. This is supposed to be the person that you think is the greatest woman on earth. You know? And you don't want me to dress like her. And that kind of shut them up. And then after reflecting, I guess, for a while, they realized, they're like, well, you know what? If this means you're not leaving the house drunk, and they're not calling us to tell us you drove yourself into a tree, or that you're high, or whatever, then... We like you like this. So they don't like it. So one of my sisters doesn't speak to me to this day, but Alhamdulillah, they accept it. My first Ramadan was extremely difficult for me. <laughs> extremely difficult because I had not that, I was new to Islam. I didn't have that many sisters in Islam. And, well not, I had a lot of sisters, but I didn't know a lot of sisters like to go to iftars and this and that. And it was my first year wearing a hijab. It was in the summer. It was extremely long hours. I was also, um, you know, I'm, <laughs> I come from a family where food is like, you know, we make huge meals all the time and I had to cook for the kids. It was very difficult, but alhamdulillah, like, it's when the thirst was the biggest deal but once you push through it and it just becomes you know it becomes easier but but the good thing is that the satisfaction you get when you do break your fast of knowing that you accomplished it and you know being there what helped me was when I started to get with the sisters you know surround myself with these sisters and like the bond you create with these sisters that helped a lot too calling each other how are you doing how's it going I'm thirsty. 
thirsty. <laughs> I, the one thing I love about Islam is I love my sisters in Islam. And I also love the promise of something better at the end. Because nobody wants to do this forever, right? Um, I love my sisters in Islam because they're closer to me than my blood sisters. Always. Even before I was Muslim. The relationship that I had with my sisters, I can never compare to the relationships I have with my sisters in Islam. And I can say that that's for every single Muslim woman I know. Revert, non-revert, like sisters in Islam, we're just... You know, it's not like the friends I had at the bar that you go there and, you know, you're friends while you're getting drunk and you're only there to hold each other's hair if you're throwing up. You know, these sisters, you know, they're there in the good, the bad, the pretty, the ugly, everything. You know, these sisters, even though they're not blood related to me, they're closer to my children than my family. They're closer to me than my family. So, alhamdulillah, my favorite part is definitely my sisters in Islam. One piece of advice I'd give Latinas is um, look, when you read the Quran, read it. And don't just read it, like reflect on it. You know, think about it. Um, for Latinas, especially in my country, Colombia, it's very important our appearance. You know, our hair, our makeup, like our whole, our whole society is about how these women look, you know. And that's the hardest thing. That's one thing that I know Latin women are like, what? Oh, no, I'm not putting that on my head. Uh -uh, I'm not walking around like that. No, 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 no. You got to think that you're more than that. You're more than what you look like. The person that looks at you has to see something else. You know, and you have to realize that you're striving for something better at the end. It's just, you just have to have an open mind when you read it. And just know that it's beautiful. Every single word is beautiful. And every single word has so much meaning. And there's so much truth in, any, in everything. If you read one thing in the Quran, read the Quran. Read it. And if you find one thing in the Quran that you do not see true, then close the book and don't open it again. <laughs>